David on the run. In our last story, we learned about Samuel's death and David's marriage to Abigail. David's community of outcasts and vagabonds continued to grow and thrive under his leadership. Now we learn of Saul's troubled mind resurfacing. The jealousy that once gripped his heart and actions begins to creep back into his interactions with David. So David is forced into hiding once again. What follows is a story of David's victory over temptation to sin and David's failure over loyalty to Israel, as inspired by the book of 1 Samuel. Hatred is a poison. Saul, who had a moment of vulnerability and forgiveness towards David, was once again falling victim to hatred's grip on his heart. Saul's repentance towards David was deep, raw, and emotional. However, it did not last long. Saul once again mustered 3,000 men to march against David. They camped outside the wilderness where David and his men were. In the morning, they planned to rise up and ambush David. Saul was in his tent, eagerly awaiting the chance to put an end to David forever. As the night grew later, Saul and the rest of his soldiers fell asleep. Shadows could be seen gliding across the tent walls near Saul's tent. Light footsteps could be heard entering his tent. There, with his face hidden by the darkness, stood David. He and his men watched Saul sleep. The tip of David's spear was pressed into the ground beside Saul's temple. God has given you your enemy, Abishai whispered to David. David hovered silently over Saul. Saul had gone back on his word. He had repented with tears and embraced him as a son. Who would hold the murder of Saul against him? The citizens of Israel would welcome him. The soldiers would follow him. His wife would still love him. There would be seemingly nothing to lose and everything to gain from killing Saul. David stood there, shaking, with his spear beside Saul's head. No. David whispered. He is God's to strike, not mine. I should not lay a hand on God's anointed. So David put his spear in the jug of water beside Saul's bed, and David and his men left without waking anybody in camp. David sat far off at the top of the hill, overlooking Saul's camp. The sun began to rise and paint the camp a bright orange. David watched as the men arose from their tents and began to prepare for battle. Abner, Saul's general, began to walk among his men. David stood and took a deep breath. He cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted down to Abner, saying, Abner! Abner raised his head to see David standing on the hill above them. All the men stood at attention and watched David as he shouted, Are you truly a worthy man, Abner? You could not even watch over your king one night. Look at the spear beside his bed. I could have killed him last night. You are not fit to protect the king. Saul woke up to the sound of David's voice shouting from the hilltops. He emerged from his tent and looked up. Saul squinted to get a good look at David shouting. Is that you, my son David? David smiled. Yes, it is, my lord king, David shouted. Why do you pursue me still? What have I done to you? If it is God who has called you to kill me, then strike me down now. But if it is your own voice or the voice of other men calling for you to kill me, then cast them away. You hunt a single flea like one hunts game in the wilderness. David's words bellowed for all the men to hear. Saul, in the most sincere voice he could muster, shouted back at David, saying, You are blessed, my son. You will surely do many things and succeed. So Saul departed from his place and did not pursue David further. David, still wary of Saul, left back to his men in the wilderness. David did not trust the words of Saul, and paranoia began to grip his heart as well. David gathered his men together to find another place to rest. David knew that Saul would not pursue David if he left to the land of the Philistines. So David and his six hundred men gathered their things and settled in Gath with King Achish. David hid among enemies, a foolish choice disguised as wisdom. David found favor with Achish, and the two of them became friends. Achish gifted David some land in Ziklag, 
and there he and his men dwelled for a year and four months. David and his band of soldiers integrated well with the Philistine people. Together they made raids on the Gizites and the Amalekites. David became renowned among the Philistines. However, David would only raid against Israel's enemies. When Achish would ask who David raided, he would always answer Judah or Negev to fool Achish into thinking they no longer had ties to Israel. Therefore, Achish trusted David and believed him to be a true Philistine at heart.